very easy. I mean, we, we saw this beautiful filly by Alusa Quality. Um, she was a stunner and went to Easter yearling sales. Very popular with all the uh, inspections. Ironically, she was sold to the Ingham brothers. Then went on to races and won the Group 1 Sires for Ingham's. And then when, the Ingham, when Dolphin or Darley at the time bought Ingham Bloodstock, she came back as one of the maiden fillies in the broodmare band. It's a circular lifestyle, isn't it? And that was, of course, Camarilla. And what a legacy she's left. Yeah, no, it's a great legacy. I mean, her mother before that was a mare called Camarina, which was actually Sheikh Mohammed's first mare that he bought in Australia. Camarilla, in turn, has, was a, a Group 1 winner herself, and she left Guelph, who won four Group 1s, and Guelph's now left encryption, and she's got a lovely filly coming along as well. And her sister, Dazzler, has produced uh, Bivouac, by Scenic Cell as well, and he's one of our exciting horses going forward and will stand up at Calvin Side uh, or Northwood Park one of these days, but he'll stand for, for Darley under the Darley Stallions banner in the future. So that's is the circle of life. And we've got Guelph here producing sort of um, colts and, and fillies as well. So from selling a yearling, or the first lot of yearlings you sold at the English Easter sale for Godolph and Darley, there's just a huge future ahead. It's so exciting to be part of because as I say, from a yearling, We've now got for years to come and probably decades, we've got this family that will keep producing fillies and, and calls for, for our business, which is just so fantastic to be a part of that. As one of the Australian breeding industry's great investors, Matthew Sandblom has already tasted great success, including winning a golden slipper. But the thing he's really passionate about is giving the smaller breeder an option to breed a thoroughbred that gets to the track and brings them success. With his son of Fastnet Rock Bullpoint already racking up the winners, in 2020, Matthew's Kingstar Farm welcomes the precocious son of Hinchinbrook, Unite and Conquer. Well, it's um, been a big job. We've put a lot of effort into it and uh, it's up to about it's almost, just under 600 acres, pretty much fully fenced and irrigated. And so we've really built a farm from the ground up. And when the opportunity to stand United you know, and Conquer came along, we thought we loved his profile of winning good races before Christmas. He's a sort of horse which, you know, people want horses which are going to run early. And, and at a, you know, this is obviously at a much more affordable price than some of the more high profile uh, horses going to stud this year and uh, he's a big strong horse and we want people to have a look at him uh, because we think he's an impressive type. So uh, I think, yeah, he's got some nice uh, characteristics and he complements what we're doing with Bullpoint. Bullpoint's probably take a little bit longer to mature, but we're happy with how he's going so far at stud. Connor, it's great to see you here at Kingstar Farm. Obviously, Matthew Samblom's done a great job in building this property and he's now building the bloodstock. So an exciting time for you to be involved. Extremely exciting. Yeah, Kingstar's only four or five years old and has really grown from uh, having one or two stallions. We've now got the original property, new property over the road. So we're getting up towards 650 acres um, down to the Hunter River. Um, so the place is, has grown uh, exponentially. We'll fall down well over 100 mares this year um, and now standing four stallions. I think anyone who's had their own mares knows what it's like to have your own bloodstock um, and plan your own matings and then see that come to fruition. And that's what Matthew can do here. He has got interests obviously in a lot of bloodstock on other farms and, and larger commercial operations. But Kingstar's set up, Matthew set it up with the small breeder in mind because he was one for a hell of a long time. Um, he knows the game extremely well and that's why we stand the stallions that we do. Well, talking about Unite and Conquer, your new boy here, of course, he's a son of Hinchinbrook, who's a son of Fastnet Rock. And, and I think, you know, he's, he's only a young sire of sires, really, Hinchinbrook. But this is a stunning grandson of Dan Glisser and was such a lovely, precocious two-year-old. Exceptional two-year-old. Yeah, I think that's what a lot of breeders want to see, particularly what the yearling market and the weanling market uh, like to see, something that a uh, stallion that is quite precocious can produce a solid type and uh, I think from the footage you got you, you know just how strong he is. Um, so he's an extremely exciting young sire, only had the three starts, unfortunately injured in the third one in the Magic Millions when he was favourite. United and Conquer's going well. Gay's got a pretty good record with two year olds and getting him up and going early and they don't get any earlier than the first week of October and he's just so professional, I mean he's a big strong boy, every horse is immature at that age but 
he just had the strength and the mental maturity to, uh, to cope with it and obviously he went on. Um, it is a shame that he injured himself, he spent a bit of time on the sideline and we tried to get him back for his three odd campaign but unfortunately he has retired with only the three starts but uh, he certainly left his mark. And conquer clear from Space Boy. Then Exhilarate's yeah. charging home. Back. And beating Exhilarate's, of course, she went on and won the Magic Millions two year old classic. And that was in that Wyong Magic Millions too. So, you know, again, that's a, it might not be a Group 1 two year old race, but it's, it's a, a race that improves in quality every year. Well, it shows his class, yeah. I was actually barracking against him that day. I was working for Vinery at the time and was cheering home Exhilarate's uh, <laughs> as uh, Vinery sold her as a yearling. Uh, so, you're not in kind of that day when I watched it live was a bittersweet uh, win um, but now that we've got him here at Kingstar I tell you what I look back very fondly on that race. And his pedigree I mean you know the, the stallions that are there are just pure speed great colonial speed but also of course his, his grandmother Dan Glissa won the flight stakes too. Extremely good mare yeah well known um, very good producer so he's got a strong female line it traces back to Dark Jewel who's obviously a blue hen um, and the speed influences she's got as you mentioned there's a lot of Golden Slipper winners in his pedigree, a lot of Golden Slipper sires in his pedigree. Uh, so it's no surprise he was up and running in October. One of the things that, that I did see when I first looked at him, he, he came out of his yard relaxed and he, he hasn't changed. He's, he's an amazing animal to deal with. He's um, so relaxed and it's been reported even when he was r racing, he was, he was such a cool customer. So once again, it's awesome to have another such, such another cool customer in our stallion barn with the likes of Bullpoint and Lord of the Sky, both another two cool customers as well. Obviously you've had a look at a lot of other first season sides, but you're pretty passionate about this boy. He's something to be seen. He's he's so strong. He, he looks like a, a proper two-year-old, which he was. I'm just so excited about what he's going to throw, the progeny, how early they're going to go. I am really, really excited about this bloke and and passionate and my passion is stemming through to Matthew and Matthew's sending a lot of horses a lot of mares to this horse everyone that's come here and looked at him has bought a breeding right uh, there's only a couple left but certainly give us a ring if you are interested after seeing this because you should be excited when you see this footage and you'll be even more excited when you come and see the fella if people come by towards Coolmore if they drop in over at Kingstar just near Denman they can also look at uh, Lord of the Sky and Bullpoint and Bullpoint's looking fabulous as ever and we're pretty excited by some of his progeny going into the new year. There are horses like Encountable, uh, Your Point over in New Zealand, and there's a few more. I've been at all the levels of the industry. I mean, I started out quite small, and you know, I, I know what it's like just to be punting in one or two horses at a time and hoping for the best. And and, and I still enjoy that. I, I mean, I suppose there's the great sort of, you know, Aussies uh, enjoying the underdog story. And you know, if I could make one of these underdog stallions a success, it would give me probably more satisfaction than anything else I've done in racing. So it's quite a passion for me and we're uh, to, to make that happen. It's just something that appeals to, to me. And so I put a lot of resources into it. I put a lot of mares to the stallions. I try and get them well-matched, well-bred mares, which suit their, their style of pedigree as well. So, you know, you've got to get behind your stallions to give them a real chance in the market. And hopefully a few people can come along for the ride as well with their mares. And I can tell you there's nothing more exciting than breeding your own winner and Kingstars Unite and Conquer gives smaller breeders another wonderful option. Coming up on Bread to Win, Sky Racing's popular and cheeky host Gavin Carmody in Arrowfield Studs, the horse who made you love racing.